Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to the another session of international business management i am dr manisha goswami assistant professor at institute of business management gla university mathura today we are going to start with lecture number 10 and lecture number 10 is on strategies of and the structure of international business so before we start with lecture number 10 we are going to let's have a look of the previous lecture that is lecture number 9 what we did in the previous lecture in the previous lecture we talked about various international trade theories international trade theories can be classified under two broad headings traditional international trade theory and modern international trade theory as far as international traditional trade theory is concerned it have four major area one is mercantile second is absolute third is comparative and fourth one is factor endowment theory mercantilism purely focused on export this focus on finding the skill or excellency area core competency area and comparative advantage is comparative cost advantage theory revolve around identifying which particular product is going to be comparatively cheaper for you to produce in your country in comparison to the host country and there were certain assumption on these two different theory that there is going to be the trading among two nations only factor endowment theory talks about the factors of production like land labor capital and depending upon the axis of the factors of production you will be taking a decision of doing the product doing the production say for example if you are having maximum of land then go for production related to land intensive units like agriculture if you are having more of labor then go for labor intensive unit if you are having more of capital then go for capital intensive unit so this is what the factor endowment theory talk about thereafter we move to the modern trade theory and in the modern trade theory there are country similarity theory product life cycle theory new trade theory national competitive analysis theory so country similarity theory talks about the four essential parameters like there should be some economic similarity among the country having the international trade there should be some locational similarity among the international trade there should be some cultural similarity among the countries where you are having some trade there should be some political and economical interest should be common among the countries who are are going to do trade together so that what covered under the country similarity theory product life cycle theory talks about the different stages of the product in the market right there for this we discuss the even the graph of the plc and this talks about uh, that what is the uh, particular stages of your product like it's a introductory stage growth stage maturity stage or it's a decline stage so depending upon the different stage of your product you will be taking a decision that where where to confine your business to whether to move to foreign country or not to move this will be indicated through the stage of the product life cycle new trade theory talk about some the certain essential parameters like economy of scale like product differentiation and it also talk about the first mover advantage and the national competitive theory is given by the michael porter and this particular theory also is known as the factor diamond theory and there they focus on four essential factors like factor condition they talk about the demand condition they talk about related and similar industry right uh, and they even talk about the strategies and the structure of the rivalry uh, countries rivalry companies in that host country so these were the different theories that we had discussed i just try to give you the glimpse and recap of what we did in the previous lecture and today we are going to talk about the next lecture and the learning objective for today's session is to make you understand the various international business strategies and the structure of international business so that you can have a fair understanding then when you are taking a call of moving into international market what are the things have to be taken into consideration what should be the structure and hierarchy of doing the work in the international market so let's get started
So first question arise in the mind as we are talking about the strategy in international business that what is strategy? In a layman term or it's a, uh, in the form of understanding what exactly the strategy is in the layman and uh, uh, saying we can say it's a master plan of action. What else we can say? Strategies are the art of winning the war without actually fighting it. What strategies are? Strategies are the art of winning the war without fighting it. That means you are using your intellectual power, you are using your you are using your wisdom in order to counter your competitor. So strategies are going to be the set of actions, the course plan that you have in your mind that you are going to prioritize when you are taking a call of entering into any country. Let's see what strategy is actually going to help the organization in much more detail. Strategy is a framework that manager apply to determine the competitive move and business approach that runs the company. Strategy is concerned with identifying and taking action that will lower cost of value creation and or, or it can differentiate your firm products offering through superior design, quality services, functionality, etc. Strategy help in clear understanding of certain key areas like customer attraction, like operate efficiently, compete effectively and create the value. When you are framing a strategy, you will be first of all trying to find out that how I am going to create the value in my product. Product is having certain areas like this is these are the different levels of the product. This is your core product, this is your generic product, this is your uh, expected product, augmented, augmented product and then comes the potential product that may come in the future. So for generating the value what you need? You need to see that what I have to do as far as my product is concerned. Do I need to focus on the core area of my product or I need to focus on the generic area of my product or I need to focus on the expected area of my product, augmented product or the potential byproduct that is through R&D. Augmented is like you are pro promising certain things like you are saying pre-installation, you are supporting the people with certain free network services, you are supporting person with some um, uh, some extra benefits right which uh, normally you don't give to so that is kind of an augmented and certain things which are well expected by the customer that you will be giving it for sure that comes under the expected right like in and the generic these are the basic product which people are getting in a proper packaging in the proper style there are some uh, they are there is a proper indication of the quality standards and the ingredient reuse the expiry and everything which is mentioned that is what the very basic generic and the core product is the basic product which customer is going to make use of so you have to figure out you as a strategist, you as a person who is willing to enter into international market. So how you will be taking up your product to the international market where you are going to refine. So these are the different levels of the product. These are what? These are the level of products. So you have to find out in which particular level of the product you are going to make the correction so that you can create the value. And this creation of the value is not only going to help you to gain the competitive position in the market and or not only to operate efficiently, but also is going to help you to satisfy your customer and at the same time is going to help you to attract maximum customer towards your organization. Now let's uh, look at some more roles of the strategy in more detail so that you can figure out that how you will be taking a plan on which particular area of the product you need to have your focus strategy for improving the quality of it for satisfying the customer and even attracting the potential customer. So let's look at the role of the strategy, the plan of action that channels and organization that channelize the organizational resource so it can effectively differentiate its product from competitor and accomplish unique and viable goals. Business strategy create vision, direction for the whole organization that's very important it create the vision and vision is actually helping to give the direction to the organization. How vision can give direction to any organization because vision 
is actually where you see yourself. Maybe five year down the lines, 10 year down the line, 15 year down the line, 20 year down the line. Right, so vision actually comes from the good leader, the person who could foresee the future more clearer than the follower is the right person to set the vision for your organization. Even IOCL could frame the vision for 22 years. In the year 2008, IOCL set their vision for 2040. They start aspiring that by 2040, there will be a complete electric vehicles in the market. So I should get ready for the electric vehicles by upgrading my battery backup system, by upgrading my petrol system, having the charging plug over there. So they took the corrosion of the loan from the market and start upgrading the system in order to meet out the requirement, which is going to happen in which year? To 2040. So IOCL is a visionary. 22 years of vision set by whom? IOCL. So that is what the vision is. I could foresee what is going to happen, what is happening in the market and what kind of the trend, what kind of the shape this market is taking. I have to upgrade myself with that trade, with that environment change. If I won't, the situation of Nokia it's not a uh, the close story everyone know about the nokia nokia was one time a 85 percent market share holder in the market of telecommunication or this mobile sector mar mobile market but now they are having nearly two to three percent of the market share how they reached to this how they gone down to so much because they didn't change themselves with the changing trends they couldn't visualize that where the market is heading to how this market is changing they didn't able to so you have to be a great visionary in order to see where the market is moving and if accordingly you have to set the strategies for your organization to fix that uh, this this is going to be the upcoming line of direction for the people or the for the whole of my organization it is important that all people within the company have clear goal and are following the direction, mission of the organization. Strategy can provide this vision and prevent individual from losing the sight of the company aim. That is another very important aspect. Apart from the vision, the another very important thing announced over here is the mission of the organization. And another very important thing mentioned over here is a clarity of the goal. That means when you have set the vision, you have to communicate it to all the people in your organization. It's not just framing the vision in a book or in a chart and you are happy with that. Now, after looking in the morning, you feel happy after seeing your vision statement. That's not going to suffice the purpose. You have to actually practice it. You actually have to find out the various objectives. You have to frame certain day-to-day -day targets to ultimately reach to your final, desti final destination that is vision. Vision is set for longer span of the time. It's no never going to be set for the short span of the time. So vision are, are aspiring to be attained in the longer span of the time and you should not get deviated. So for that stopping of deviation, what you need to do, you need to make every piece clear about the vision of the organization that this is what we are aspiring to be after five year 10 year 20 year or like this IOCL 22 years apart from this vision and clarity of the goal among all the people that what we are there has to have a clarity of the mission mission talks about the reason of existence of the firm as vision is letting you know what you will be five year down the line what you will be is going to be clear by vision statement and why you exist what you are doing for the society is going to be explained what you are doing for the society is going to be explained by the mission what is your reason of existence what is the purpose of your organization right say for some organization having educational institutions so the purpose of any organization who is into the education, providing education to the society. For sure, the purpose would be to serve the society with quality, the teaching with the quality engineers, managers, educationalists, pharmacists, right? So this is going to be the mission. And that clarity of the mission should also be there, not, in, not only among the top people or the top management people of the organization, but also towards the other different people working in the organization. Before proceeding further, it is important for you to know the different levels of the strategy. 
let us look at the strategy there are certain levels of the strategy there are three different levels of the strategy one is the corporate level third the second is the business level and third one is the functional level functional level strategy right now for our concern because it's actually the decision going to be taken by the corporate level people so our prime concern is on corporate level strategies because they are the people who will be the decision maker they are the people who will be setting the policies for international business so let's look at what are the different corporate level strategies corporate level strategies are going to be of three different kind one is the growth strategy second one is the stability strategy and the third one is the retrenchment strategy again here in this different type of the corporate strategy growth strategy is going to be the focus of international business because when you are in a state of stabilizing that means you are not able to do well in your country because you might be having some uh, tough competition in the market that's why you are looking to stabilize or you are undergoing some retrenchment you might be uh, undergoing certain process of closing down unit because you are running some short of money there is a crisis of the fund or there is some economic slowdown in your country or the paying capacity of the customer is gone on down or there may be the change in the market trend so you are undergoing some tough time in the retrenchment and stability strategy so but uh, ideally people usually don't take effort to move from their home country when they are undergoing the stability situation or the retrenchment situation usually people look for the expansion of the business when they are undergoing the stage of growth growth stage is only possible when you are having some favorable environment your home country is supporting as well as the foreign country supporting so that's a ideally a best situation to expand your business globally so when you are looking for expanding your business globally what you will be doing now let's look at the different dimensions of the growth strategy there are different types of the growth and there are different ways of the growth ways of the growth could be through uh, your fdi ways of the growth could be how you can grow or expand your business internationally so one is your fdi and fdi is going to be of green field investment or it is going to be green field development that is through special economic zone area or export processing zone area or free trade zone area that we discussed in the previous lectures and or else it could be brown field investment and brown field investments are like merger like it's your acquisitions it's your joint venture it can be your uh, strategic alliances right so this is what we have already discussed in the previous lecture these are the different modes of entry in international market right so these are the different modes of entry in international market so these are can be the different way of growing your business beyond your country and there are certain types of the growth strategy the what are the those different types of the growth strategy like it's uh, divided in two parts one is the concentration and second one is the diver diversification and if you are looking for diversification again there are two type one is the concentric diversification another one is the conglomerate diversification conglomerate diversification now let's try to understand what concentration is you try to confine your business in a single product line you are not changing the product line you are confining yourself to a single you are into your business right you you are not changing its product line right you are in the dairy products you continue to be in the dairy products right so that's what that's how you try to concentrate but when you confine yourself into the dairy product that means with milk you are offering only milk and you are offering various flavor of the milk till here it is okay but the moment you start culturing the milk and start offering the curd or start processing the milk and coming up with ice cream start processing the milk coming up with butter cheese or other stuff then it will become a diversification but in a related line and that is what known as concentric diversification 
I hope you people are understanding that concentration is the style of the growth where you are focusing on a single product line. Say for example, you are a dairy product offerer and you are offering milk to the society and you start adding some flavors to the milk, maybe the strawberry flavor of milk or the soya milk or some other flavor of the milk you start adding up that is going to be a pure concentration. But the moment you start processing the milk to come up with something related to the milk that is going to become a diversification that means you are moving from pure concentration to a diversification but in a related line that is a concentric diversification. On the contrary side there is a absolutely unrelated diversification that is what known as a conglomerate you can here you can take the example of mother dairy like an example of the concentric they are into various dairy products right all products related from milk itself basic thing is the milk and from milk they are creating and producing lot of goods in the market but when it comes to a conglomerate you are producing very unrelated products like take an example of tata from salt to jaguar and land rover that means a salt to a chemical company or automobile sector right absolutely different market right they are they need an absolute different infrastructure absolute different profile of the people in the organization they need the different supplier they need the different creditor for the salt and you cannot use the same setup for the production of the automobile or for the production of the uh, Tata uh, software TCS you need to have a separate system when you are having a separate system separate processing units for different different units right and none of the product is related to each other and that is what going to come under the conglomerate. Tata is an example, Adani is an example, Reliance is an example where they are into conglomerate business. They are into the business or they are into the growth strategy. This is also one of the growing style that let's move from one sector to another sector and that is strategically very correct. There may be the possibility that what one particular sector is not doing well in the market but for sure your other sector might be doing well in the market until and unless there is a complete slowdown in the entire economy of the nation. There is a possibility one sector if there is a session one sector is having some downfall the other sector might be doing significantly well as in case of the automobile is doing something the automobile having lot of fluctuations in the market but other sectors are having not so so the other sector will leverage profits to your organization so we have understood that as far as the strategies are concerned and strategies are going to be formed at the level of the corporate when it going to come to the concern of international business when it is related to international business it is going to be formed by the corporate people and who are the corporate people these are the top level people top level people or the top level management where the CEO of the organization the managing um, the, the CEO of the organization or maybe some managing director the board of the directors rather are going to come under the top level management so uh, I think this much of understanding is there with you that what strategies are and when it comes to international business corporate strategies are going to play the role to take the decision which particular strategy for which particular country I should take when it comes to a growth that means you have a favorable environment and you need to decide which particular growth strategy I should go for I should go for the concentration or I should go for diversification and within diversification should I go for concentric or should I go for conglomerate and what different ways of the growth I can make use of for entering into the international market this is what we try to explain with this chart and diagram now let's head towards the strategic management process right a strategic management process is having four stages this having four different stages one is the establishment of strategic intent second is the strategy formulation third is the strategy implementation and fourth one is the strategy evaluation and control now under the strategic uh, in uh, under the establishment of strategic intent there are certain things to be formed like formation of vision mission 
defining of business and your objectives are going to be framed which give you a broad classification that what is the what are the directions we need to follow what is the reason of my existence what is going to be the nature of my work what is going to be the priority of doing the work is going to be clear in your mind then you, there is a process of the strategic formulation now here under the strategic formulation what is happening you are assessing and you are actually scanning what you are doing you are scanning the environment you are scanning environment and environment broadly classified in two parts macro environment and a micro environment macro environment talks about political economical socio culture technological ecological ethical and legal environment right wherein the micro environment comprises or this is your this uh, environment is absolutely beyond your control macro environment is 100% beyond your control until unless you are a very big tycoon of the industry uh, the country you are the big industrialist and those you are among those people whom government also consult before framing industrial policy until unless the everything is going to be beyond your control where in case of micro environment we say micro environment is talking about resources it is talking about the uh, structure strategy and fourth is the culture so this is the micro environment where micro environment is actually related to your internal environment and macro environment is absolutely an external environment so this internal environment is going to be assessed on the basis of the resource that you are holding is it valuable enough to invest in those resources or not the structure of the organization that we are going to cover in the upcoming slide and the strategy of your organization when you are taking a decision of moving to international market and the culture of that country where you are taking a call has to be understood has to be scanned well has to be taken care of has to be make a note of it before giving a call of moving into international market otherwise it is going to be so difficult for you to survive in that international market once you are done with this entire practice you will be able to find out your strength weakness opportunities and threats this particular thing is going to give you the result what are my strength what are my weakness what are my opportunities what are my threats and you can find the best permutation combination of your strength and opportunity you will be able to figure out how i am going to locate my strength to maximize this opportunity and how i am going to locate my uh, strength to minimize this threat how i am going to work on my weakness uh, with the help of my strength to minimize the font size of it and reduce it that that permutation combination you are going to make and you also need to find out how my weakness are going to be more difficult for me to handle because of the threat prevailing in the market how this particular threat is making my weakness more broader or making the font size of the weakness more larger so i also need to figure out so that i can make use of the correct strategy to minimize the weakness and overcome the upcoming threats in the market once you are done with this practice what you will be doing you will be doing the implementation what you whatever you have planned whatever the correct permutation combination of the strategies you have framed you are going to implement them in the market but implementation is not all you what you all have to do you equally have to do the assessment you equally have to do the assessment you have to figure out that what you are doing is correct or not whatever you must have set certain targets for yourself right this is the time and this is your performance in the market this axis is talking about the performance and this y x axis is talking about the time this is your time slab maybe in uh, uh, they are in just take an example into number of days and this is the unit of production and say for example 10 days were considered as a training right and they have set the target for you of 30 after 30 days what they are expecting you to do the production of at least 25 products after 30 days and and you are not able to do it you just able to attain 15 products there is a gap of 10 and gap analysis is important to control the deviation that means whenever you are implementing the strategy 
that is not all going to suffice the purpose you equally have to find out that how you are going to uh, control if any deviation come you for and for controlling you have to evaluate and for evaluation there are certain gap analysis mechanism which different company make use of so you also have to make use of certain gap analysis to figure out what were the standards that we have set and what is the actual performance so this was the standard performance which were we were expecting and it reached to only 15 this is the actual performance so we try to find out standard performance my minus actual performance will give us the gap and reasons of the gap will have to be identified to overcome the problem now let's look at some of the area of strategic compulsion like e-commerce and internet culture is also becoming so vibrant and everything is open and available for every next person just click away. So if the information is so readily available, I need to be very cautious about the information about my company which is passing across the globe in order to maintain my image and goodwill. Hyperactive competition is there because people can access your strategies and you can also access other strategies. So it become a cutthroat competition or a red ocean kind of a situation for a company to survive and fit. So you have to work on some diversification of your product to overcome this problem of uh, hyperactive competition. Other pressure is also used to come from the NGO side, the social worker and that is the correct pressure actually. It is not the pressure to be blame of. This is the pressure that you should do it by yourself that supporting the downtrodden class of society. So, lot many companies have entered into what CSR, corporate social responsibility and they are supporting the downtrodden class of society and we have already discussed about the ethical practice in the previous lecture. Now let's look at what you as a company can do. Uh, you can decide either to standardize your product or to differentiate your product. So if you are taking a call of a standardizing your product and when you are taking a call of differentiating the product, what you are actually doing. So this is like a set example where we can see if you are trying to standardize your product, your low cost of production is going to be low, your complexities are going to be low, roll out with the concepts and the speed because you become efficient, you start gaining economy of scale because you are producing the product over and over year, now you are excellent in your area. We are in case of a differentiation, you have to invest heavily on R&D. You need to have highly skilled people in your organization, not just a skill, highly skilled people and the scientists you need actually to do R&D for you to help you to come up with new creation, invention, new patent for your organization, right? So you have to take a call whether to go for standardized or to go for diversification or to find a better situation of local. That means rather I will be standardizing nor I will be differentiating, rather I will try to provide the product which match or require match with the taste and preference of the market. So that means localization and which is very well performed by MNCs, multi domestic companies or the multinational companies. Now the question arises: why we are studying this, why, why so much of strategy, can't we just like what we are, answer is no. Why? Because in the international market, you will be dealing with two pressure. One pressure is to reduce the cost by global integration and second pressure is to customize to meet the need of the local customer. So to fight with these pressure or to answer back these pressures, you need to be strategists, you need to study, you need to know what are the different levels of the strategy, how the growth strategy work, how stability strategy work, how retrenchment work, how I can take the benefit of it, what are the strategic management processes. You have to have a fair idea about it. You should know about your vision statement. You should clearly state your vision statement to not only to yourself, not only to the top management, but also to all the workers working in your organization so that the alignment can come. So now let's look at the, uh, the model given by Bartlett and Ghoshal for making a company to understand how a company can deal with these two pressure, pressure of local responsiveness and the pressure of cost reduction. So uh, the, uh, on the x axis we can say that local responsiveness consideration that means a quick response to the customer and you start differentiating your product or you start altering your product is ranging from low to high. 
Here the cost reduction pressure is very low that means there is no pressure upon the company to reduce the cost wherein you move up upside of the y axis the cost reduction pressure become very high for the company. Here there is no local responsiveness pressure that means you can offer the product what you want to there is no need of customizing and altering the product as per taste and preference because your product might be close to need quite close to the need of the customer. So here it is low on the other side it is very high. So let us try to see which particular strategy is aligning in which or uh, under which particular type of the pressure. So when it comes to our international strategy, international strategy here what we can see the local responsiveness pressure is low on the this side the cost reduction pressure is also very low. So that means there is no pressure upon a company to reduce the cost of the product when they are offering an international market. Equally, they do not have to customize the product as per the taste and preference of the international market. So, what you will be doing in that case? What kind of the strategy is? This kind of a company are going to be international companies. But these companies are these companies are international company and what they do they are into only export what they do they do exporting in the previous lecture we talked about the stages of internationalization internationalization stages they were domestic company international company multinational company global company and transnational company so the international companies are those company who are into low local responsiveness pressure and low cost reduction pressure because they are making some production of the goods and services here which other country could not produce. So, they want the original product from India in the same original form they do not want any sort of variation in the quality of the product. Like for example, the Indian spices are liked by lot many foreigners. So, the spices are exported from India in the same natural form. We are not having a cultivation process that this spices we are producing for America, these spices we are producing for Bulgaria, these spices we are producing for Russia. Such kind of specification and alteration or modification is not taking place in Indian agriculture land. We are just producing spices and for the global market. That means there is no pressure on the cost reduction, the companies are ready ready to pay what we are charging from the spices of India and at the same time there is no pressure to alter or customize the product because people in the foreign market like the originality of the product that we are offering to them. So this is the international strategy. Another one just above the international strategy is the stage of the global strategy. Here what we are seeing situation is quite similar, local responsiveness pressure is low but the cost reduction pressure now becomes a high. That means you can offer what you want to but the price should be controlled. It should not be so costly that it become unaffordable for the customer to bear. Now under the global strategies are usually adopted by global companies. Now who are those global companies? These are those companies who invest heavily in R&D to find out universal products universally acceptable or we can say cultural universal product like television can be like softwares like computer like your laptop right there are certain products which are universally acceptable like medicines are going to come into it pharma sector are going to come under the uni global company they are investing heavily in terms of finding out the best product which is going to be universally acceptable across the globe but at the same time there is a pressure of maintaining the cost of the product because ultimately the product is going to be used by the customer of the host country or your domestic country or the multiple countries across the globe. Ultimately who will be consuming it? Customer and customer should be able to afford it. So for that there is a pressure of maintaining the cost of the product and though as you are into R&D so there is a possibility of slight increase in the price of the product so there is always a pressure goes on in the mind of the global company to control the price of the product by asking the government sometime to subsidize the product. Right. So, uh, like in case of the pharma or medicine the most, uh, and the medical devices right these are going to come under the global companies. On the other side when we will move to this continuum of the local responsiveness where the pressure is very high 
and cost reduction pressure is low. So, the multi domestic is lying on local high local responsiveness pressure and low of cost reduction. Cost reduction pressure is low, but local responsiveness pressure is very high. That means, these are those company who can charge higher a little higher, but product has to be as per my taste and preference. You just imagine the time when pizza was launched in India market around 98 or 99. There was a complete buzz in the market what kind of the stuff these people are offering to us. We whenever we take a call of moving out and having a food or having some uh, uh, dining out, we are looking for some very spicy food or either a very sweet food which we can't cook at our home place. And these people are offering a boiled vegetable, foreign, uh, foreign vegetables boiled over the bread and they are offering to us. The people boycotted, people did not like it because they forgot to understand the local responsiveness pressure. They miss out with this idea, they fail to realize that my market, my Italian market is very different from the Indian market. Italian people do not like spices because you do not have much spices options in your country, right? So, you do not have much option of the spices, so you do not like spices. But we Indians are brought and brought up in the market where the lot of spices, lot of options are there. So, we like spices more and you are not offering the spices over the vegetables which you are putting up, people get disheartened. And now the situation is the people of the Domino's company, Domino's Pizza is even offering Indian curry paste over the dom, uh, Domino's Pizza. So that is the change. Now they understood that Indian people like spicy food. So we have to add different flavors which is going to be quite close to the taste of the Indian customer and they come up with the pizza which Indian people like the most. And now is a situation that in India every next people have a craving for having a pizza. And uh, the very shocking news is that masala dosa and chicken tikka and paneer tikka are quite popular in US and Europe market. So people are developing the taste across the border and this is what happening because of the company's understanding for the local responsiveness market and on the same time they, they need not to worry about the cost. They can offer the product at a reasonably higher price, 1000 rupees, 500 rupees, they are okay with that but they want the taste. Next moving in the same line is a translational company. Translational companies are those who try to have a blend of these two things together. They try to be multi domestic also and they try to be global strategist also. Uh, so, these are the company having high local responsiveness pressure and at the same time they are having a high cost reduction pressure. So, they regionally try to lend up with the production of companies like FMCG products are usually going to come here. They try to maintain the price and equally they have to be very much at, uh, clear about the regional requirement or the local requirement. So, altogetherly this Bartlett Ghoshal model is talking about in which particular domain you are lying. Are you an export company? So, follow the international style. If you are a global company, follow the global strategy. If you are a multi domestic company or a multinational company, follow the multi domestic style. If you are a transnational company trying to be in the global market, trying to have some global presence, trying to offer products which are universally acceptable, also a slightly customized and altered as per some country's requirement, then try to be transnational strategies. So, with these kind of the understanding, you will be able to figure out that how to deal with the cost reduction pressure and how to deal with the customer responsiveness or the local responsiveness of the market. Now, let us quickly look at the five forces of the uh, Potter's model. These five forces of the Potter's model are talking about the, uh, the situation of a particular company in the market, right. So, in a when, when it comes to a particular company or the in sector in a particular country, they are having certain rivalry. They are having such a rivalry, they are having some rivalry among themselves, but despite of this rivalry, they are few more forcing, they are few more forces which are questioning the presence of your industry or your company. Like the buyers bargaining power, there are the stakeholders bargaining power, there are suppliers bargaining power, there is a substitute bargaining power and the top is coming the threat of new entrant bargaining power. So, if industry is not able to answer back these forces, what is going to happen? 
if they are not able to answer them back they are going to shrink the size they are going to further pressurize it and going to make it so difficult for the industry to survive and finally it going to get shrink so what is important to understand this five forces potter's model that they try to make you understand there are certain significant forces coming from outside it's not only within the industry there are certain forces or within the company you are having a competition it is not like that even uh, there are certain forces which is coming from outside so you have to have right strategy in your hand to handle with those different forces which are creating a trouble for your company like just take an example of the buyer's bargaining power when a particular buyer bargaining power would be high very true that when buyer is having multiple options buyer is having multiple options that that means they are having brand choices and if they are having brand choices their bargaining power is going to raise so why my customer my buyers are having high bargaining choices because i might have a product which is very much standardized so i should go for some differentiation answer come that i should go for some product differentiation or either i should look for the augmented i will be providing certain services apart which my competitor or rival are not providing i will provide free installation to you i will give you free service till 6 month i will give you this much freebies along with the product installation so these kind of the augmented product you can offer to reduce the bargaining power of the customer or or else you can go for product differentiation by investing money in r&d right other force may come to your organization which can affect the survival of your company that is a bargaining power which is coming from the supplier when supplier would be having a high bargaining power when the multiple manufacturers are there you don't have any monopoly there are various manufacturer who are manufacturing the same product which you are producing right like a supplier of the silicon is having a huge requirement and a demand in the market not only in the computer sector the other sectors are also making use of the silicon so if everyone is looking up to my product my my bargaining power is going to be high now you as a industrialist what you have to do you have to find out the measures through which you can create a link with the supplier or better acquire the supplier have your own wholly owned supplier yeah either you can buy your supplier or else what you can do you can have some healthy relationship pr relationship process to in order to strengthen the relation with your supplier start giving some perks to him start giving some traveling allowances along with his family to start calling them in your uh, uh, your organization your company meeting uh, sorry the your organization club activities your organization freaking out time start calling them so that they start connecting with you emotionally other potential threat that can come from the threat of the substitute that there may be the possibility there will be a close substitute option available in the market the product which you are offering and then all of sudden there are product which is little more advanced and is a quite substitute of your product right so initially when keypad phone used and there is a substitute of android phone has come up in the market which created a lot of threat and even the nokia company not able to survive in the market and other threat could be the potential entrant because government has o- removed all the barriers there is no entry barrier and if there is no entry barrier and even the exit barrier is also not there there will be the potential threat so how you are going to overcome this problem you can overcome this problem by by making your your economy of scale right you should work on gaining economy of scale right which that is only going to save you from the potential new entrant others are the relative power of the union or the government government if there is no political stability if there are a lot of political risk are there this is also going to influence your decision and this is the sixth force which is newly added to the five forces of potter's model so with this particular model and the previous model of the bartlett goshal model i try to make you understand that in a uh, none of the organization can survive in isolation every organization has to make the understanding that you have to have some core strategies 
in order to gain core competency in the market and for gaining the core competency and framing the core strategies of your organization a bulletproof course of action for your organization you need to have a fair understanding of what is happening around you you need to see what my buyer is doing you need to see what your supplier is doing what is the possibility of new entrants in the market how government is behaving right how uh, what are the options of the substitute of my product so before any competitor come up with the substitute let me come up with the substitute so you need to have such fair understanding in the market before taking a call of entering into any market now uh, let's look at the factors that can affect the strategic option i we had already covered most of the things now let us quickly review of, of the various strategic options like external constraints are there external constraint maybe they are certain entry barriers right entry barriers by the government so this can be the constraint that you cannot take most of the strategies you cannot use certain strategy because such of kind of the strategies are boycotted by particular uh, government so external constraint can also be the unavailability of certain resources my maybe the factors of production are not available in the host country that can also be intra organizational forces are there that there within the organization there is a resistance among the worker workers are not happy with the idea of your expansion so you need to have good hr manager in your organization you need to have good leadership in your organization to develop what the com commitment level among the people or workers working in your organization next is the value and preference towards the risk that means you have to see whether uh, you are the risk taker or not if you are not a risk taker then lot of the list of the strategic options or the list of the strategy which you might have executed if you would be a risk taker may go in vain so you have to question yourself are you ready to take this much of risk in the market or not so if you are not mentally ready that whether you will be able to take risk in the market then then try to find out the strategies comparatively less risk oriented next is the impact of the past strategies right sometime you made certain strategies which have a very bad impact on the organization growth there may be the possibility a particular strategy that your organization like in case of the tata nano there was a, a, a the, the people were stating that the advertisement was not nicely planned but it was not so none of the people of the tata company planned the advertisement it was actually happening by default right so most of the time the people also wonder that i made this mistake we haven't planned the marketing very uh, nice marketing of the nano car because of that there was a huge dent on the image of the nano car this might create a pressure in your mind and but such pressure should not be taken as a fear that such pressure should be taken as a lesson and learn and from your past ill experience or your debacles you should learn and fight back to come up with a better strategy in the market time constraint could also be a reason that you need to see that i don't have much time to my much time to execute the strategy because uh, this uh, strategy execution at least require 2 to 3 years of the time of the proper execution and implementation in the organization because the proper analysis of environment uh, scanning of the environment both external and internal is required in depth and then on that basis you are going to make an execution of a strategy in the market so it is going to there there is going to be a time constraint the people might not be having sufficient time to uh, analyze and execute the thing you just take an example of reliance G they tried to enter in the market of telecommunication they started thinking about it in 2010 and they actually launched the product in 2015 november so the complete analysis of market was going on for the complete 5 years of the time so time constraint is a reason but if you have a time then only you can come up with a better strategy the company like reliance you information constraint there may be the possibility you might not be having an access to all the information and if information are not available then you may not be able to take the correct action so you have to see how i how you're going to make required information available for taking the correct strategic decision competitors risk right you always have a fear of being defeated by your competitor how your competitor is going to react and act when you will come up with certain changes so that has to be well planned you have to plan this thing well in advance that if i 
I'll be coming up with the product in the market like a Geo SIM in the market in the month of November in 2015. If I'll be coming with the Geo SIM, then I have to see how other competitors are going to react. That if they are going to lower down the price, then I will be offering free services. And this become a first company in the world to offer free services consecutively for six months in the whole world. They become the first company in the whole world to offer free services of networking, data, calling, everything is free, consecutive six months in the market of India. So you have to plan how your competitors are going to react when you are going to come up with certain product in the market. You have to see, foresee, evaluate that if I will be taking this action, they will be reacting in this manner. So if they will be reacting in this manner, I will be coming up with this step. So you have to visualize well in advance. You have to prepare yourself that if I will be taking this action, for sure they are going to react in this manner. So you need to have such kind of the vision in your mind before taking a call for the strategic course of action. And selection of any strategies. Now let us begin with the structure of the organization. A structure of organization can be centralized or decentralized. When your structure is centralized that means all the powers are in supreme hand right and when you decentralize that means you are giving autonomy. So global companies are coming under the centralized where in case of multinational corporations are coming decentralized and the mixed structure we found in transnational companies where there are some places they are centralized at some places they are decentralized and you can make use of subsidiaries of the board of director to give the correct direction to the organization and they are the people who will be working on finalizing and setting the vision for the organization. They will give you advice, approve, appraise local management, help the management unit providing the response to the local condition, assist top management in strategic planning, supervise the firm ethical users. These are the roles played by the board of directors and they are very important in your structure of the organization, right? Because there may be the possibility because you are owning the business and you might be just thinking and thinking around profit maximization. There may be the possibility. So you need a board of director to direct you for actions like ethical issues. So the board of director play essential role in any structure of the organization be it a domestic structure or it is a international structure. Let us quickly look at the various structure and we will give you a fair idea of understanding. I copied the structure from the Google. Let us look at the initial division structure is going to be like this where chief executive various functional heads these are the finance head manager marketing head production head HR head and there is going to be the vice president for international operation and he will be having the different units in uh, different countries in his control like France, Japan, Egypt, Australia, Argentina, Bulgaria, France, Russia, right, Italy, Rome, any country wherever you are having a business, all the countries are going to come under the vice president of international operation and within these France operation like the France, there is again going to be a person to take care of the unit, there is going to be different functional heads, there is going to be different functional heads, everyone will be having a different functional head uh, according to the business unit and the size of the unit there. There are international division structure where you are going to have the segregation on the basis of the plant, right? You are having domestic division plant, you are having domestic division tools, you are having domestic division of furniture, hardware and international division and international division is looking up to different different parts of the country in the world. There is a global product division, see on, on the basis of the product which you are producing in the country, say for example, they are product from A to E and the product C is getting lot of popularity in the foreign market. So you put forward this product C for the various foreign markets and the rest of the product you kept it for the domestic market and this is what shown in this chart. There are product area division, so there may be the possibility that in case of the uh, the area, particular area that you want to explore in the Europe, you want to explore only Britain, Germany and Netherlands, the rest of the Luxembourg or the Norway company do not want to explore at all. So this may be the possibility, so you are just focusing on the area, that uh, area may be because on the country similarity you have, so you might be looking for specific area and under the various different heads, you will be having a domestic production unit of various products which you are producing there. There is a mixed matrix structure. Let me quickly let you know how this mixed matrix structure works. Say there is a CEO, there is a board of directors, right? There are some legal advisors and managing directors and there is a project A, 
project B and project C. Matrix structure is usually based on the projects and you have functional heads. You have expertise of civil engineers you are having who are expert in construction of the road. So, they are civil engineer expert in road construction. They are civil engineer expert in construction of the bridge. They are civil engineer exp uh, expert in construction of the flyover, right? So, you if you are getting a project for the construction of the road, then this is the project C, you are going to assign this project to him. If you are getting a construction for the bridge, you are going to assign this job to him. If you are getting a construction for the flyover, you are going to assign this to him. So, this is based on the project. It is not based on the now, uh, fix the structure. This is this is not a like a fixed structure, but this is going to be the fix. And based on the projects, you will be calling the various civil engineers, or you will be calling for the contract or the tender in the market, and that particular thing is going to be purchased by them. Now, let's quickly review the various topic that we had discussed today. Today, we talk about the different strategies, and under the strategy, we talk about the Bartlett Goshal model and the Porter's Five Force model. And in the final section, we talk about the various organizational structure. And one thing we should know that the strategy determines the structure. Strategy determines the structure, which is very important to be known and because if you are bringing a change in the strategy, you have to bring the required change in the structure. These are the different reference book I referred today. Thank you so much 